What's going on guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. Today I've got 10 fragrances. All of these I've worn this week. They're all freshies. So basically this is going to be my weekly rotation video. These are still 10 fragrances that I rocked and I think are pretty signature scent worthy. Most of these I even rocked to the gym. I wore to work and just throughout the entire week really. They're all excellent choices and I'm going to start off by saying I don't think any one of these are a bad selection. So let's go ahead and start off with the number one fragrance that started this week off which is this Jamal's Shiro. This fragrance right here is pretty much the old school Aqua de Jo. So aquatic notes, a little bit salty, woody, and spicy. This is an excellent fragrance, guys. I finally released the full review on this fragrance, and uh, even though I didn't really have to test it this week, it was a no-brainer. Anytime I was headed to the gym and I didn't know what to rock, I just sprayed this sucker on, and honestly, that's pretty much what this is gonna be. So it's a perfect signature scent for the summertime. So check it out, guys, at Jamal's Shiro. It's pretty affordable and really a no-brainer. Next fragrance we're gonna start off with is an excellent option. This is the winner of the Clone War. If you haven't watched my YSL Y EDP Clone War, then I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys that this was the winner. Absolutely crushes the other ones. And the main reason is because of that mid to dry down. So YSL Y EDP is really a utility knife type of fragrance and it's signature scent worthy. So it's no surprise that this is too. So you really have that sage, you have these uh, the amberwood, the tonka, the olibanum, and some citruses like the ginger up top as well. It's sweet, it's bubblegummy, it's shower gel, and it really gives me almost like this pop rock, crunchy sweet quality to this fragrance. And this is the only one that really captures that. The resins, the olibanum, and all of that, this is definitely number one, you guys. So it doesn't really get the top of the fragrance, but mid to dry down, which is really what matters, at least for most of the longevity of the original, this one gets it about 90% close. Easily the number one, you guys. And if you get this and you compare it next to Latafas Fakar Black, you probably won't spray that one on as much as you will this. So the next day this week, I was rocking Spanish Tobacco by Ibrahim Al Qureshi. This fragrance was pretty much a test wear. So I wanted to rock this one to finally get a full review. And I had to wear this a couple days, really. A little unusual, but familiar at the same time. So it's a light take on tobacco. So if you think of almost the lightest blonde colored tobacco, that's essentially what this is, but a heavy influence with aquatic notes. So heavily aquatic, heavily tobacco, and uh, very unusual, very, very unusual. This is a Middle Eastern take on a freshie that's aquatic with tobacco. So aquatic and tobacco, how do you even do that? Well, you do, and you do it like this, Spanish tobacco. This is beast mode, and if you're interested in the full review, check that one out. But in a nutshell, guys, this is opens up with citrus, saffron, and in the mid, you have that light colored tobacco, and it basically just dries down into a light, woody, aquatic tobacco fragrance. All in all, really not bad, and for the price point, it's hard to find something that performs like this. So Spanish Tobacco was the next fragrance I wore this week. Next one on this list is a fragrance that I kind of wore every day, really. I just wore this to bed, I wore this to the gym, and uh, sometimes when I was underwhelmed by a fragrance that we're gonna talk about on this list as well, I just go ahead and cake this on. I even layered this with another fragrance I wore this week. And this is my collaborative fragrance with Sphinx Fragrances. So this is basically a fun, coconut summertime fragrance. It's not your typical suntan lotion type of coconut. Uh, there is a white musk quality to this. It's white musk, it's sweet, it's coconut, it's extremely unisex, guys. So despite the name being coconut daiquiri, in the beginning, you're gonna get a lot of lemon, lime, and sugar. So if you guys like Sprite, you're gonna love this one. It's not quite as spicy or as sparkly or carbonated as something like a Sprite would be, but uh, lemon, lime juice, really, with crystallized sugar. It's as delicious as it sounds, you guys. Extremely unisex, and I've gotten nothing but great feedback from this one. I have been complimented on this, but it doesn't help that I'm going around spraying it on people. So if you don't believe me, go ahead and sample this bad boy. You can find a 10 ml right now, and you can use my code Aromatics to save 15% off. Check out Coconut Daiquiri. Next one on this list is a fragrance that kind of disappointed me a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This one was very short-lived. And in all honesty, it really didn't disappoint me that much because I was able to spray something else on that I enjoy a little bit more. This is from the new releases of Armoff, and this is called Armoff's Odyssey Tyrant. So a lot of mixed reviews on this one and a lot of mixed feelings on this one. This is going to be a full review very soon. This is a hot release. It has to be reviewed. So what did I get with this? Opening gives me Bulgari Tiger. And the reason I say that is because there's a heavy grapefruit influence in this fragrance. But as it starts to dry down, it gets much closer to Alurum Sport. So in the beginning, it's like 80% Bulgari Tiger, 20% Alurum Sport. As it gets into the mid and dry down, it then shifts to 80% Alurum Sport and 20% Bulgari Tiger. 
But like I said, you guys, the grapefruit kind of does uh, dry down and really dwindle away within the first hour. Uh, it's always there, but it's not nearly as strong as something like Bulgari Tiger. I don't know how I feel about this one. The atomizer on this thing kind of sucks as well. But it is what it is. Total longevity on this never gave me more than five hours. That's as interesting as this fragrance got for me. Really not that interesting. Armoff's Odyssey Tyrant. The next fragrance I wore on the same day that I wore Armoff Odyssey Tyrant is one that I am absolutely in love with. The quality exceeds the price tag on this one. That's the real deal. This is called Divine Asylum by Fragrance World. I mean, the presentation itself is a trophy, right? <laughs> look at the look at the cap, you guys. And this is clearly inspired by Elysium, you guys. And this is absolutely the best one. And yes, it's confirmed that this is in fact the dupe of the Parfum Cologne. You guys, basically what this is, is Imperium times two. Literally that. So if you got five hours out of Imperium, imagine what you're going to get with Divine Asylum. So Divine Asylum Eau de Parfum, what does it open up with? The main difference between this and the original, you're just going to have to wait for the full review. I'm not going to do that to you guys. No, the main difference with this and Imperium and Asylum and all this stuff, I already did the Clone Wars. So if you want more details, you can check that out. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you here. Um, basically, this really does capture a lot more of those uh, aromatic facets and aromatic facets just relate to like herbs. So thyme, artemisia, those are herbs. Those are like things that you can cook with. It's considered an herb. Am I right? And so... Um, this really does capture those along with the peppers. So it does have that carbonated feel, the same one that you're going to get in Elysium. And that's another, you know, quality that you're not going to get with some of the other dupes. So much more carbonated, much more aromatics in this, and it lasts hell of a long time, much longer than all of the dupes, including Imperium. Is Imperium still good? I still love Imperium. I'm still going to rock Imperium. Is Trillium good? It is. It has its own unique uses. And if I'm being honest, Trillium is a bit fresher than all of these dupes. So if you want something a bit fresher, which I think is more appropriate for the gym time, I would go with Trillium. Trillium would be more appropriate for the gym. These are just classier. So Imperium and Divine Asylum are classier fragrances. If I had to pick between all of the dupes, hands down, it goes to Divine Asylum. Another fragrance I rocked this week, and I actually rocked this one the same day that I wore Shiro, is one that I'm in love with. And really, I'm just wearing it at this point because of my enjoyment. I've already reviewed this fragrance, and I think it's fantastic. This is one of those rare cases, guys, where it's better than the original. If you don't want to take my word for it, go ahead and try it, because this is relatively affordable, and you can use my discount code AROMATICS10 at OODSTORE.COM to save 10% off of this bad boy right here. And this bad boy right here is called Parfum Diomez Sport. You guys, this is... 2017 Diorome Sport. This is prior to the reformulation after the 2017 batch, and this is probably my favorite ones, honestly. This is a perfectly balanced fragrance, easy, signature scent worthy type of fragrance, and it's just, it works. It definitely works. So summertime fragrance, this one I wore to the gym afterwards. After about six, seven hours, it was pretty much gone. And then for the rest of the night, believe it or not, Parfum Diomez Sport lasted a hell of a long time. I got eight hours out of this one, you guys. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration, whereas the original is an Eau de Toilette. So check this one out, guys. Don't Sleep on Parfum Diomez Sport by Fragrance World. Next up on this list is a relatively new wear for me, and this is from the Privé Couture Collection. This is also known as Arda Zafaron, guys. That's who makes these. These little suckers are only 29 bucks, I believe, from oudstore.com. And uh, they have a lot of dupes where they just straight up tell you what they're duping. This is Louis Vuitton's Imagination. And honestly, it's really not bad. I've been watching these for quite some time, and I thought to myself, eh, these are cheap, and the vials look cheap. I'm sure this doesn't smell that good. But I was wrong. I definitely was wrong. I put this on right after the unboxing, and I was rocking it, and I was like, Mm, okay, not bad. Basically, what this really reminds me of is Bulgari Tiger with a Pettigrain note. So a little bit greener, sharper than you'll get with the Bulgari Tiger. But if you enjoy fragrances like Bulgari Tiger and that grapefruit note, then I highly suggest you check out Louis Vuitton's Imagination because it is in the same family and category of those fragrances, just with the added Pettigrain. This one really didn't last that long, but it wasn't that bad. Considering the price point, I got four hours out of this one, which in all honesty, I wasn't really disappointed in because I got to rock the next fragrance on this list. So imagination, I'm probably still going to work around it. I'm still going to have to rock it again, really pay attention to what it did. So still not a bad option. Imagination from Privé Couture. We're nearing the end of the week and I decided to rock something from Arabian Oud and this one was uh, highly requested and it's Arabian Oud's Night Silver. So this is pretty unique, although very similar. It, in my opinion, smells like something in the family or category of fragrances like Blue de Chanel, Versace Dylan Blue, and Dior Sauvage. If all of those had a baby, then they would produce this bad boy right here. It is very sexy. It's very, very sexy. Oh, I did not mention 
throw a little bit of Parfums de Marly Leighton in here. It has more of a spice to it. If you find all those three fragrances uninteresting, then this is absolutely the most interesting of them all. So Parfums de Marly Leighton, that uh, apple and geranium, that's exactly where we get the bite from. So mostly the geranium, if there is some apple or some, some base sweetness in this fragrance, resembles that Parfums de Marly Leighton. And then everything around this fragrance screams Ambroxan and Freshy vibes. Excellent fragrance. You guys, bang for buck. This is a no-brainer and easily a summertime signature scent. Really all year signature scent. I got about eight hours from this one. So I did the full review. I was pretty satisfied with my wearings. This is absolutely a must-have from Arabian Oud. And you guys, take a look at this dent here. You guys see my collection. And to put a dent that big means something to me. And the last fragrance on this week's rotation is honestly mouthwateringly delicious. I understand that a lot of people think that there's a lot of undeserved hype, but I'm being 100% genuinely honest, and that's why it's easy for me to recommend this one, extremely easy for me to recommend this one. If I'm being honest, my two favorite from this list is going to absolutely be mine and from the Zahar Offline, and this is called Coco Loco. Fair warning, if you do not like the way mandarins or clementines smell or tangerines, then this might not be for you. So this is basically a uh, red clementine. So think of halos and cuties along with a meaty, I have to emphasize meaty coconut flesh. Very natural smelling, lasts a hell of a long time. I got on clothing next day and on skin eight hours. This is a fragrance that mark my words, I will get a backup for. So like I was saying guys, if I'm being 100% honest, as far as my favorites from this week's rotation, there's quite a few, it's not just these two, but these are by far the most creative, the most history making fragrances, you guys. There's a lot of heart and soul and passion in both of these fragrances. This. Definitely took a lot of time and consideration, but I couldn't have asked for anything better. I have to have to give recognition to some of the ones that really did stand out in this list as well, and it's Divine Asylum and Arabian Oud's Night Silver. So a lot of heavy hitting fragrances this week, a lot of them. It was a fun week. This is one of those rare cases where uh, I actually enjoyed a lot of these fragrances. That's all I wore this week, guys. Pretty successful. I would say that all these fragrances are pretty signature scent worthy. Uh, some heavy hitting fragrances this week. Very enjoyable stuff. I plan on making these videos on a week weekly basis, I think it's pretty interesting. I wear on a minimum every week 10 fragrances. I mean, after I shower, I rock another scent of the day or I just go from there. You know, not all of them are hits. Sometimes you're going to get something that performs for four hours, three hours, five hours, and it's perfect. I almost always end up wearing 10 fragrances every week. What better way to bring you guys more season appropriate content than doing weekly rotation videos? This one was amazing. It genuinely was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And if you did enjoy watching this video, scroll down hit that subscribe button and until the next one peace